Welcome pilgrims to the fourth spiritual lesson on sacramental living, where we're going to discuss the parable of the importunate neighbor. But before we do that, what does the word importunate mean? And where does this parable occur in the gospel? To be importunate means you are annoyingly persistent and insistent. This parable is sandwiched between two events. After one of Jesus' disciples asked him to teach us how to pray, and Jesus responded with what has become known as the Lord's Prayer. He immediately followed it with an analysis. Yes, yes, Midge, yes. Well, I, I'm, I, I have to ask if I can borrow something, please. What, what happened is I invited somebody over tomorrow for lunch for sandwiches and stuff and I got they want baked bread I promised him baked bread I don't have any oil I don't have any flour okay you're my little lifesaver okay. what can I I have I have some oil I have some flour oh How's wow that? oh thank you so you're much most welcome. I greatly appreciate hey, it you've helped I'll me pay so much back. no no oh, you've yes, helped I will. Yeah, you've helped me so much in the past it's the least I can do to help you thank you so much you take care okay you too All right. bye 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 that was a pleasant interruption and it became known as the Lord's Prayer Jesus followed it with an analysis of the three components of prayer, asking a question, seeking a response, and finding the answer. Now let us read together the parable. Jesus said, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are in bed with me. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you though, he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. This is a very pithy parable. It's short, but packed with meaning. I came across a sermon by Father Victor Potapov, and I would like to summarize his interpretation of this parable. He started off asking us to imagine a small Palestinian village, you know, just a couple of houses. Everyone knows each other. They're probably interrelated by marriage. It's a self-sustaining community. They grow their own stuff. They make their own stuff and there are no nearby stores. The wife in each household bakes bread, enough for the day. By the end of the day, everyone knows who has run out and who has left over. Now keep in mind, this is the Middle East and it is a duty to receive and feed unexpected guests. It is a tradition. So now let's get back to this little village and to this house that is dark. It's people go to sleep early in the country. The wick of an oil filled lamp glows dimly and can be seen through the curtain windows. The doors have been bolted. It is large and heavy and it's hard to open and moving it would cause such a racket that it would awaken everybody. That the parable states that the man's children share his bed indicates that they live in a one room house. To have to get up, cross over, step over the bodies of his children in order to get some bread and pass it out would be a huge inconvenience to say the least. God knows that he will help his neighbor and give him some bread. God is asking us to be like that hospitable neighbor who must render aid to anyone seeking assistance. Tradition mandates this response. 
Jesus reassures us that even more so will our Heavenly Father come and help us. The Orthodox Study Bible states on page 1388 that this parable demonstrates God's faithfulness to those who are in need and who pray with persistence. The Church Fathers interpret midnight as both the time of our death and a time of great temptation. The friend is Christ, who as our only source of grace provides everything we need. So what has that got to do with you and me and living sacramentally? Remember I mentioned this book last week. It's called Sacramental Living, written by Reverend Michael Haldus. And he defines sacramental living as a transformational way of living involving our heart, our mind and soul and their connection to God. He further states, but this connection is only understood and deepened when we devote everything we are and do to God and live a life of worship in which Christ likeness is our goal as exemplified when we take on more and more of God's divine nature into our human nature as made possible for us when God came as man in Christ. Remember, God asks us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And God understands what a struggle and hardship it can be. Saint Athanasius, who was the Bishop of Alexandria, Alexandria and lived from around 296 to 373 AD, wrote many inspiring books that became the building blocks of Christian theology. He is often called the father of orthodoxy. His treatise called On the Incarnation is famous. And one of his most well-known quotes, Jesus became what we are, that he might make us what he is. Now, some have translated this statement as such. For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. So what does that mean when applied to this parable? That it means that we should not only do what is expected, but also anticipate what may be needed and to share it joyfully. Now, we have a dilemma. How can I do that in the middle of a pandemic? Well, before the pandemic, I would have said to you, I'm sure you know someone living alone. Ask them over for a cup of coffee. Such a simple act of hospitality could lead to a life-changing event for that person or yourself. Developing a friendship that could lead to unimaginable benefits. But how can you do that now? Well, since we have to practice so much social distancing, how about leaving an anonymous note taped to someone's door or mailbox, leaving them a goodwill message? And after follow days, follow up with another message. I saw something like that a couple weeks ago on Steve Hartman's On the Road series on CBS evening news on Friday night. You will never know how far a little goodwill will take you until you take that first step. And what may first appear to be a little extra effort could lead to a great ending at the most unexpected times. As it is, if you remember, we had a competition and I actually had a subscriber give me the correct answer. The person that I was imitating was a very famous 40s actor named George Raft, who was very sinister and intimidating. Did you get that feeling when you watched the video? I hope you did. If you'd like for me to do any other f competitions, let me know. Put in a comment. Subscribe if you're not already subscribing. The next parable will be on the persistent widow. Till then, may the peace of the Lord be always with you.